episode 8 Batman Syndrome So Hiroja Shibe here with a, just a really quick thought I want to talk a little bit and touch about scams. I'm going to have some link in the descriptions on some really good uh, crypto sites. One of them is Bad Crypto that kind of goes out there and tries to let people know what are scams and what are not scams, as well as just general like informational websites or videos about just scams in general. And then a couple of individuals, primarily on the YouTube channels, that have been talking about the different scams that are in the crypto space, kind of warning people, letting them know that this is a scam, this is the things that you need to look for, this is why it's a scam, whether it be a pyramid scheme or obviously like an exit scam, things of that nature. Uh, they'll be linked in the show notes. But I just want to talk about in general the culture that's within the cryptocurrency space. It seems that it's like everyone expects you to be like Batman. I mean, everyone knows who Batman is, you know. Batman, you know, like my shirt. Batman. Everyone wants you to be, you know, with a utility belt, have all the angles figured out, all the, uh, you know, the gizmos and gadgets, and just, you know how to take down your opponents and avoid these scams. Mind you, within the same breath, again, they also state that you're going to get scammed in space, and it happens. I've been scammed. Many people that are prominent members of the cryptocurrency space have been scammed within the space in itself either by people by companies or uh, by wallets or things of that nature or different avenues or different businesses a lot of times you often hear from primarily Bitcoin maximalists that you know all all coins are scams and we'll talk about that viewpoint um, another another thought bubble um, about that but I just want to talk about how at the same time within that same breath that they they say you know you're going to get scammed they'll be like oh you're such a big dummy why did you do this why did you do that uh, ha 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 kind of like putting down people that get scammed instead of uplifting people and saying you know that sucks that that happens to you you know it, it is going to happen but these are the things you need to be aware of when you're in this space so that it doesn't happen again doesn't occur for you and that way you are aware and there are a few people that do do that but i don't think there's enough as a whole it's more like this kind of snide kind of uh asshole kind of commentary superiority thing that you know i'm holier than thou i'm so better and smarter than you because either i hold on my coins and my coins are not out there or i did all my research or whatever or or i'm so smart that i would i don't or i don't get fooled when in fact time and time again it's proven that some of the most intelligent people, um, the most wealthy people have a significant amount of income are the ones who get duped and scammed all the time. In fact, they're a highly rich target. And the, and the reason it is is because there's this cultural perception that they, that's within that sort of subset of people that believe that they're too smart to be scammed. And thus, that's how they get duped and scammed. And so I think it's a very, it's a, one of those put off things. It's one of the reasons why Initially, I personally was put off by the Bitcoin community because when um, initially I got into um, cryptocurrency, when I first heard about it, it was 2010, and I thought there's no way that, that the government was going to allow <laughs> for an independent uh, creation of wealth or independent currency to occur. They're just going to shut that shit down rapidly and quickly, just like they did uh, uh, the libertarian coin and um, all the different people that push against about taxes, whether they did it uh, lawfully, uh, pushing up against the tax system, or illegally by stating that you, you shouldn't be paying taxes. Those kind of ta tax protesters, uh, you know, they, they, those things got shut down in the very early aughts and throughout, um, you know, the, the global crash there. So then I was like, there's no way. If you get yourself associated with that, you're going to wind up in jail or whatever. And then 2012, it was like, it's still around. It's getting some significant traction. I was hearing a lot of stuff about Silk Road, uh, the drug marketplace. People were utilizing. It's just right before it. Just like 2012, like in the 2011, 2012, was like, like right when it was like really like popping, you know, socially within those niche markets of the, uh, of the tech world. But at the same time, it was also... I was hearing it from people that weren't necessarily typically techies, but you know were purveyors of certain types of drugs, and that's where they were getting their drugs, and either they were getting it for personal usage, or distributing, or, or, or things of that nature. 
fascinating conversations. But as I was getting the space and trying to find out information, it was so very hard for people to be forthcoming with information and being very clear and conveying. Like, for example, I had no idea what a damn DAT file is. I mean, I've been utilizing computers since I was probably like five years old. And I have never crossed that file designation before because I've never had a need. I really didn't. Uh, even though I utilize both Windows and Linux and Apple, you know, the three major operating systems out there off and on throughout my life, I've never heard of a, a DAT file. I didn't know where that designation was. And it was like pulling teeth to find that information out. Um, at the same time, when you go through the comment se sections, like particularly early 2012 for our Bitcoin, it wasn't as quite as helpful as it is now. There wasn't as many resources as it is now to help people on ramp. I've only got the show notes about a really great podcast from the Bitcoin Podcast Network called On Ramping with B, where he goes and talks to people that are either somewhat familiar, very familiar, uh, maybe even have some Bitcoin, and talking to them about Bitcoin and on ramping them and getting more, them more involved. Uh, primarily we're talking about Bitcoin, but in the cryptocurrency space. It's a, it's a great lesson, especially if you're a noob or know somebody's a noob or you want to help someone in your life at different levels of education, ages, things of that nature, how to get into the cryptocurrency space. But those resources weren't really available. And those who did possess the knowledge weren't exactly very clear in their uh, conveying information. Um, at the same time, they were, there was a lot of put downs and negatives of like, how stupid are you? Like, why are you using a web a wallet? And just really putting down people and being very extremely negative. And so it was kind of toxic in general to try to find out information about this very new uh, financial instrument and having the people that were utilizing or at least being more vocal about utilizing it not assisting and helping people get on that was very unusual i've never seen that really with any kind of um tech instrument or any type of instrument you always have an, adv an advocate group or a person who advocates for something and they want you to utilize it and they will take the time and they will abc it or l l5 it for you so that you can know uh or they're like, okay, you're a little bit higher than L5, then they would do medium level or mid medium level or high level or get really technical for you to be based on the skill set and the learning apparatus of that person. And they want you, because they want you to utilize either the product or the information or get you involved. They want to sit down and, and engage with you. And it just, it was very frustrating. Um, so I was basically an observer. I got really put off. I was very much an observer. I had other things going on at the same time. They really get really, really heavy into cryptocurrency until 2013. And then I got involved, uh, just started reading. I just really, you know, I read the white paper for the first time, I actually read it. Uh, I started uh, looking more into the space. At that time, there was more information that was helping people on wrapping. There was actually people taking the time um, and engaging with people. There was podcasts, there was videos. Uh, it was People were actually saying, you know, we really need to teach people how to utilize that. And then that's how I got involved in Dogecoin. And that's when I learned what like a DAT file was, the actual location. There was numerous individuals, at least within that community, that went through step by step by step by step by step, as many steps as it took to find something as basic as just turning on your computer, turning on your monitor, stuff like that, waiting for you to put up, put your password in to activate your OS and stuff like that so that you could find the DAT file and download the core wallet or getting onto a web wallet or uh, utilizing different services and now at this point where the price is so high you know there are more and more services out there either by people or assistants or consultants or even information out there helping people um, wrapping them into the cryptocurrency space. I still think it needs to be better. I think there needs to be more languages made available uh, to people, not just exclusively in English or Chinese. It's like English, Chinese is primarily some of the languages I see. But I do see a lot more translations are occurring. Uh, but I do think there still needs to be like a, an ABC one, two, three level where every step, you can't skip any step. You gotta assume like nobody knows like what even the slash button is. You gotta make it that not only that uh, precise but also dead simple in your explanation so that way they can have a, a basic level of understanding of where they're going what it is they're doing and then you build up from there and that's why I, I kind of put put Batman here because while there are these like kind of scams that are happening in the community and things of that nature I think that the, because of this mindset where there's an assumption that everyone has to be a Batman or they are a Batman and have all these you know angles and stuff like that I, it is very extremely arrogant uh, I think at the same time that, that people are not 
building people. They're not training up, you know, the Robins or whatever so that they could have the skill level or at least be equivalent to Batman. I mean, Batman in and of himself, you know, some of the greatest stories were his, because his level of arrogance uh, were, you know, like the OMAC storyline, which happened in the early aughts, where he had built a, uh, basically a, a AI system to monitor the entire world so that he'd have as much information and have all the angles covered. And it turned against him. And because he inputted all the information about, like, the Justice League to the superheroes, it was able to not only take down, you know, various avenues of world governments and superheroes, but knew all the, the solutions and and counter punches and things of that nature because Batman thought of these things, including taking down Batman himself. Uh, there was a story early on in the aughts where, again, that information was, um, you know, indexed and all this stuff that Batman had about taking down the Justice League, including, like, you know, Superman, Wonder Woman, the Flash, and stuff like that, some of the more powerful Justice Leaguers. And it was called the Tower of Babel, and somehow, I forgot about this years ago, Ra's al Ghul was able to get into the Batcave, take down information, and take down the Justice League. Um, so, you know, Batman in itself is in, not infallible. There's not everything in the utility belt. You're not going to know everything. You, you basically know what you know. You don't know what you don't know. And the reason why I bring up Robin is that we, we kind of need a training program. Mind you, my favorite Robin is Trim Drake. Uh, he chose to be associated with Batman. He chose not to be Batman. He chose to be his own type of superhero. Uh, but he utilized Batman to build up his skill set. And Batman trained him, was willing to train him so that he could be you know, a great detective just like Batman, but at the same time a great superhero of, of his own right. And I think we kind of need that type of program where we are training people up to be aware of the different scams that are happening in the system, to be able to utilize the skill sets that they do possess within themselves. Maybe they're not very tech savvy, but maybe they're very sociable and maybe we need those type of social people to do our marketing. Uh, maybe they are uh, have a language set or a language barrier, be able to help and convey, say, okay, Let's get people who can translate and help you understand so that way you can not only understand the product and understand the financial instrument, but then you can turn around and train other people within your own language and then, uh, so that they can know the same things that you know and build from there. And so, th you know, these are just kind of my random thoughts here about, you know, just kind of the negative attitude that people have had to get when someone get, does get scammed and not willing to build them up and help them and say, like, look, these things are going to happen to you, but this is the be aware of these are the things that you should be aware of these are the kind of obvious signs that don't seem obvious to you because you didn't know but now that this has happened to you so that you're made aware of and when these indicators happen you can take a step back and not you know either invest or be aware of distance yourself not utilize it or make other people aware of it and spread the word and say hey look this is a scam this is something that's going to take your money this is not going to work uh, people are just trying to you know screw you over and stuff like that and I think some of that is kind of start, you know, happening and stuff. And like I said, I have a link in the show notes of those who people are out there. But I just don't think there's enough of it happening. I don't think there's enough of it saying, you know, hey, yes, we're kind of all on our own. And it's a trustless system. We're not supposed to trust everybody and stuff like that. But at the same time, we don't need to be assholes about it. I've mentioned this a few times in these, you know, these thought, thought boggle, these vlogs I've been doing. We don't have to be assholes about it. We can extend a hand. We can help people up. We can brush them off and say, hey, look. Sorry that happened to you, sweetie, but this is what you can do so that it won't happen to you again. And if you know somebody who's in the same space so that it won't happen to them. And that way you're prepared because, again, you don't know what you don't know. You just don't. And the things that you do know might not apply into the system. And just making people aware and educating them and making them aware of these things instead of putting them down and laughing them off and telling them how stupid they are or how gullible they are or how greedy they were are things of that nature it's not very helpful at the same time even if you dot your i's dot your t's do all your checks you can still be screwed you can still be scammed it's, you know that's what the global collapse happened where there's certain start financial instruments instruments and you thought all these things were in place they're supposed to protect and check and prevent some of these things happening and that's not what happened and of course nobody really went to jail and those that went to jail were such peons down the ladder that is just really not relevant so those are my thoughts you know just let's try to build people up let's try to be a little nice about them let's make people more aware of the scams out there the indicators uh build people up make more robins and less uh i don't know jokers or less people that are dissing themselves from this space and not want to participate within you know cryptocurrencies in general and that's detrimental to them because you know they could have a chance to have individual control of their wealth and freedom and they're not going to do so because you know 
people were assholes to them. People weren't open to them. People weren't willing to help and educate and willing to do something like that. So they're going to be turned off by it and not willing to participate in the community. And when it comes down to getting to that mass, you know, that mass index, that mass uh, adoption phase, you're going to have a very strong vocal cord of people that are saying, don't do it. It's not helpful for you. You're not going to be able to do the things you want to do because there's no mechanism or means for you to do it. So that's it. You know, that's my thoughts on the matter. Uh, thank you very much for listening and to the moon.